So we've only got a couple of steps left, pretty close now, and it's looking really good. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and welcome to part uh, 15 of the Tamiya 148 scale Phantom F4 B build. So if you've been following along, uh, we got into a part where we're pretty close to done. Most of the uh, construction is going uh, to be focused around about the cockpit. So you can see quite a bit of the cockpit has already been placed inside. We're putting together the ejection seats, which I've got down here in the pilots. Uh, put a black wash on them as well. So we started on the uh, the framework as well. Here's the uh, the shield for uh, the pilot's instrument panel, <clears throat> control panel for the uh, the co-pilot. But while this was in storage, waiting for this particular session, looks like we've broken off one of the undercarriage. Okay, so that's one of the main undercarriage. This one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on fixing that. It's probably a good uh, chance to show you how I fix things. It's quite often that things like this can occur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be drilling through both of these sides, uh, putting a brass pin in there, and then that'll be as strong as new, maybe even stronger. So let's start with that first. Let's place that like this, move some of these other bits across here. So these are the wheels which I'm going to put on later. Got a pilot here with a wash on them. They haven't been um, cleaned up of their washers yet. These are the parts of the canopy. All right, so let's get into the fixing stage. All right, I'm going to put on my mag visors here just so I can see what's going on. Okay, so this undercarriage component. Uh, to me, are quite clever in that they have a square type uh, pin, I guess, and it fits in really snugly and very uh, strongly. Uh, but because I've had this packed away in a box, it's had a, quite a bit of um, crushing pressure on it. So that's broken off at this point, which means we've got the, the square component uh, lost. So we could glue this on with a butt join just like this, but the problem with butt joins is they don't have a lot of... Um, uh, lateral stability. So to give it extra strength we're going to drill through quite a fair way into this strut then also into the strut mounting point, put in a brass pin and that'll spread the load and make this really strong. Okay so let's get my knife ready. All right so my knife's been used quite a bit now so I'm going to change over and get a new blade. It's particularly um, important for this as well because I'm going to be using the tip of this blade to create the uh, the guiding hole for the drill a bit later. Right, so we're just using a pretty classic X-Acto knife here. But any modeling knife that's got a, a sharp point is good. So I'm just going to try and locate as central as possible. So there's that little square section here and it helps by having this because if I just aim for the center of this and aim at the center of the other side, we should get a pretty good match for the pin as it goes in. Okay, so I'm just spinning this like a drill. And I'm using a knife because the knife can actually just poke into the surface, whereas the drill can slide around. And as I'm drilling it through, where you rotate, it'll only take off material where the blade sharpened. So if you're not quite in the center, like now, I can start focusing on the direction where I want it to move to. And I'm only doing like 90 degree spins. And that's scraping out the, the material towards the other side. So once I'm happy that it's almost in the center, that's going to be my guiding hole for the drill bit. Okay, so I can just adjust it a little bit. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to do exactly the same with this. All right, so we're going to locate the center. Just poke it in there. Start it off with a little pilot hole. Pull it out and have a closer look. And then from here, we can adjust it to the center point.
All right, I think that's pretty close. All right, next step is basically we need some uh, some wire. So I like using brass because brass is nice and quite stiff, uh, but it is also soft enough to cut easily with um, uh, some medium type side cutters. So this is a round at a mill, I think. It's something we've used before, so it's a little bit bent, but it doesn't matter. As long as we get a reasonably straight section, uh, it'll be fine. So I'm just going to cut it off about here. Okay, so I'm using some different side cutters that are a bit uh, more heavy duty. Don't want to use your standard plastic side cutters for cutting metal because you can dent them. All right, so let's just cut it here. Now, obviously, the longer the piece, the more stable and stronger your repair is going to be. But the problem is, the longer it is, the more you have to drill and the more accurate your drilling needs to be. So at the moment, that's probably around about, well, I guess, probably about eight mil long. And as you can see, if I hold this up, that means it's going to be about four mil in each side, which is fine, I think. Next step is we need to find drill bit that's going to sort of suit. I've got a selection of very fine drill bits here. So these ones have got 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, and 0.9. And I'm going to select one which is the closest or a touch smaller because as you're drilling the holes can enlarge a little bit and you want this to be sort of snug All right so I'm going to go with a smaller one so the small one is the 0.5 okay so let's get that out and let's put it in my pin vise And then we'll just gently drill this out, taking care that it's going in as straight as possible. It's good to have very good drill bits as well because they'll actually cut through and not be a grinding action. Okay, so these are very good. If you can see there, you might be able to see the, the swarf. The swarf is actually coming off in a fine spiral, which means it's actually cutting this all the way through. If you had uh, bits that weren't sharp, this would actually just be all powder, which isn't ideal because that means the drill bit is going to wander. Okay, so as that's gone through, we'll just see how far we go, because I want to take it down to about four mil. And you can work that out by putting in the drill bit and just having a close look to see how far it's gone in. So I just need to drill that out a bit more. And as I'm drilling, because these are very fine bits, you want to not have any sideways movement because if you do, your bits can break. Okay, so I'm being gentle, just holding it upright and then just rotating it with my fingers. All right, now since we've done that, I'm going to test fit this piece of wire and we'll see how tight it is. If it is too tight, we'll go to the next size up in, in drill bit. All right, so I'm just going to poke that in there. That's actually really nice and snug. That's perfect. All right, but we need to take it down a little bit further because I've got quite a long pin there. And then again, just gently. Things like this, you don't need to rush. Okay, just gonna blow off that, that dust. Try this again. All right, that's, that's sitting in about where I like it. Okay, so that's good. All right, now we're going to do the actual undercarriage part. All right, so same thing, we're just going to take this really easy. Try to keep it straight. So I'll keep, I'll turn around and just make sure it's going in reasonably straight because if this is not straight then there's a chance that it's going to be offset when you glue it back. But then again, I mean the, the brass is soft enough that you can bend. So if it's not perfectly straight and aligned, you can bend it at this joint and glue it in place. It'll still have the same strength. and you just correct the, the angle by bending the wire. Okay, let's see where we're at here. 
but I want to drill it in a bit more. Just needs about one more mil. Okay, all right, let's try it out. All right, so I'm just going to pop the wire in here. All right, so you can see that. That's probably about five mil hanging out, so I may need to drill that a little bit more. But I'll just test fit it in the hole over here as well. It appears that, yes, I need to do a little bit more. Alright, so still got another 2 mil to go. And so far, looks reasonably straight, but we'll drill a bit more and we'll see how we go. Alright, so need a couple more mil. So even drilled before, you need to take out the swarf. The swarf is all that dust that's getting drilled out, because otherwise it can clog the bit, and you're not really going to go anywhere. So you see, I'm just pulling it out now and again, just to clear it out. All right, let's try it again. Now this technique I'm using can be used for any sorts of joints where parts are broken. Quite often it can happen with Gundam type models because they're jointed and as you're moving the, uh, the poses you can put some excessive um, forces on parts and it'll break through. Alright so it needs a little bit more drilling. Now what I might do is I'll start drilling through the base. I think we're pretty right now. I think when we put this in there, it's going to be pretty snug. Whoops. Okay, so it's snug now. And we just make sure we've got the right angle so it needs to be fairly straight. I think it looks pretty good. So all we're going to need now is rather than using plastic cement I'm going to be using CA glue. Okay so I'm just going to get some CA glue on this here. I like putting this on another surface and applying it with a smaller applicator because you get a little bit more control. Okay, so I'm going to take this pin out so I can apply glue to the pin so glue is within the Part. And now I'm going to apply the glue to these points here to glue it in place. A little within the hole there. And just a little bit of glue here where that strut supports everything. Okay, so let's slide it on. Okay, 
Okay, so I want to make sure that the alignment is about the same. And you can move it around a little bit while this is happening. Make sure it's straight. It's all about having a close look at everything, make sure it's lined up. I think I'm pretty happy with locations of these now, so we'll let it dry. There's not a lot of um, super glue on it at the moment, or CA, which means if I do need to correct it, I can just crack it because uh, super glue is brittle and it's quite easy to crack and reposition but for the moment I think I'm pretty happy okay we'll leave this on its um we'll, we'll make sure we don't get any excess super glue on anything let's put that over there leave it on its roof to dry put it over there okay so that part there it's just been repaired all right so with the repair job let's just put this stuff away well, we'll just continue on with um, doing the sill, which is uh, step 58. That's the wrong one. All right. All right, so I've got the sills here. I've already um, glued on one of these handles. Okay, so there's a little handle which you can just see here. So that was that part C11. We have our front cover there. This S2 part I've already glued on. Okay, so there's a head-up display. It needs to be glued on. And there's the control panel here. All right, so while the control panel is out, uh, should I glue it in now? Maybe I should. All right, let's have a look at it. Just to work out how this sits in place. Okay, so it looks about right. Okay, I'm just going to tack that on at the moment because I'm not too sure if this is the angle I want. I really want to fit it into the cockpit area, but because I'm just waiting for the undercarriage to dry up, uh, we'll do that a little bit later. So I just put on a couple little dabs of glue here, just to tack it. It's going to stop it from falling off for the meantime, but I can still readjust the angles later. Okay, so that's that part there. Now the clear head-up display, I think I'll do that later. I'll do all the clear parts because they're quite delicate, delicate, and we'll do that a bit later on. So in this case, we're pretty much right with step 58. I'll move that here again. And let's move on to 59. Okay, so we're getting close to the end here. All right, so 59. This is the, the canopy. All right, so usually with the painting, but since I'm not doing any painting, we're going to skip this part. This is where um, all the window masks are applied in their particular positions. This is also where you need to choose whether or not it's going to be the closed canopy or the open canopy. So there's two canopies in, uh, included in the kit. So if you want it closed, then it's one piece. The advantage of the one piece is it eliminates all the gaps when you try to uh, join individual components together. Or if you do want to open, then you have separate open components to use. All right, so that means we're going to skip 59, we go straight to 60. 
And here is where you choose the closed canopy, which we're not doing. We're going to do the open canopy. So over here, open canopy, we start with these clear sections here. All right, so we've got these. Let's just pop these here. And then I'll need these components. All right, so C17. C17. All right, let's put my visors back on. Okay, so it's 17, and then N27. All right, we'll get back to the end parts. C31 and C30. Okay, let's try and find this N27. What do the end parts look like again? Can't remember. Not those. End parts. N27. Okay, there's this bit here. Seven C twenty three. Oh, hang on. I'm looking at the wrong things here, getting confused. N twenty seven. That's it there. C seventeen I have. These parts I have. Okay, also C fourteen I'll need. C fourteen. C14, it's all strut. Right, C14. Okay, so we need to cut off this little extra molding pin. All right, so we've got those bits. Now let's get into the clear parts. All right, so let me locate the open canopy components. All right, so here's our open canopy components. Quite interesting how it's been spaced out the way it has been. It's got molded in protection. So you see each of the canopies have this uh, uh, frame around them, which is really good so that they don't get crushed by any of the other parts and they don't get scratches on them. Okay, so what do I need here? So to start off with, we need G1. So G1 is this one here. Okay, so I'm going to cut this slightly away from the part because with clear parts, they are actually quite brittle and they can leave uh, marks. So let's just pop that there. All right, so I've cut that off with quite a bit of the, uh, the nub remaining. Okay, by doing that, I've got a little bit more control around here and I can start chopping it off closer and closer to the part. To the point where we don't get any stress marks. So that's quite nice. There's still a little bit left there. It still looks clear. Now, if you're getting stress marks, it's actually going to turn white. Okay, so white marks are from stress. And that's generally from also not using very sharp tools. So having some good side cutters helps in this instance. Okay, and then the rest of it, we're just going to trim off with a knife. Okay, so just be really careful. Use a fresh blade, which I've already changed at the beginning of this build. Okay, there we go. 
like so. Now with these particular clear molded parts, because these are multi-piece molds, this is actually connected from this side and this side and from the bottom, quite often with these you'll find a, a seam line down the center. Now since I'm building this pretty much out of the box, I'm going to leave this seam line in there. But um, if you want to make that absolutely perfect, this is where you'll polish this seam line off. Now if you'd like to learn how to do that, I do have another video which shows you how to polish plastics. Uh, but yeah, like I said, uh, at the beginning of this build, it's pretty much out of the box with very little cleaning up and it is fairly clean for something that's got a molded in seam line. So we'll just leave that in place. All right, so we've got that one there. Now what I like to do is uh, get all the components and actually uh, dry fit them together, I guess, if I can. It's going to be a little bit messy though. Let's, let's just try this. All right, so there's a little bit of movement there still, but it's pretty much taken. All right, so I'm going to spin this around. And let's see what this looks like when it's in here. Okay, so it's dropped in quite snugly. I just want to test fit. This is the, it's the front canopy, I'm hoping. Yep, yeah, looks like the front. All right, so that's probably expecting to have some seals in place. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be cutting out some more bits. We'll cut out all these other bits and we'll test fit them. All right, so that means I need C29. C29, C23. Thirty two and thirty three. C19, do I do that one already? C19. Oh no, there it is. There's a strut C13. Okay, and of course with that is the other clear part, which is G2. This is G2, and again I'm going to be cutting this away from the component first. Right there. Right, we'll cut that off. I'm going to trim this up. Let's shift him over there. Alright, so again with a sharp blade. I come from this side. Slowly slice and then we'll slice it on the other end as well. Alright, okay again this one's got the really fine seam line on it, but we'll leave it in there, okay, but looking at the way it's been moulded, there's actually no seam line on the inside that I can feel, which is a plus, it means you only have to polish the top section, okay. <laughs> Alright, so we've got all our bits that we need to cut out there. I'm going to trim all these bits. Let's keep these sort of segregated in 
the parts that use the same components. Start trimming these. Just taking some care, just give it a bit of concentration. Some of these parts are really fine. Makes a difference just to clean them up really well. Okay, so that's that section sort of cleaned up. Let's do this section now. There's a few more bits. Alright, there's one more part to do here. Alright, they're cleaned up. Let me see. Well, this should be already cleaned up. Alright. Now let's just test fit some of these these seals let's make sure we have these in the correct order all right so it looks like it goes this way I 
hopefully. I should lock onto this locating point somewhere here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these on but not with the regular cement. You could which will give a very nice bond but there's always the chance that if you make a mistake it'll crazy clear parts which is not going to be so great. Now you can use these, this is what I'm going to use. Here we use this micro scale product called micro crystal clear. So these are water based very very clear drying PVAs I guess you call them, they're like a wood glue. Okay and then there's glue and glaze which is made by Deluxe. So either one of those is going to be fine. They do take quite a while to dry so you need to be careful handling parts just after using the glue but when they dry they are perfectly clear so they're not going to craze the, the clear components um, and the other benefit is if something does go wrong like it's in the wrong spot uh, it's only a surface um, joint which means it's not going to be welded on and you'll be able to peel it off if you have to. So let's just, I'll use this one and I'm just going to take a little bit out and put it on here. All right just being careful I don't mix it up with super glue I had before. Now I'm going to take a little bit out because this is a little bit more controllable if I do it like this. All right so I'm going to put it all up here. So you can see how it's coming out white so wood glue is otherwise known as white glue. This is just super clear version. Okay, now I'm going to be using this skewer or a toothpick for applying the glue because you need to be very, very, uh, I guess, accurate with the application. Okay, so let me just apply a little bit here. Okay, let's see how we go. So this bit's going to go in here. Okay, so that's in place with the glue. It's going to take probably about half an hour at least before it actually feels like it's bonded. There is some excess which is squeezed through, which you don't have to worry about that because we can remove that later with a, the end of a, a sharp knife. Basically just slice it and it'll peel straight off like a skin. Okay, so that looks alright. Let's do the other side. Alright, so that's going to be this bit. Okay. So I'm doing here, these are the C31 parts. All right, let's see how these look over here. So these should just drop in.
Well, actually, it should be. What am I doing wrong here? C31, C30. Oh, I see. Okay. So I was going to align it with the sill here, but there are these protrusions, and if uh, these were being sit flat here, the protrusions would have been cut off. So this is only giving me a rough idea. So it looks okay for the moment. All right, so they're basically holding by themselves in place now. So I'll leave that, they can dry. I'll work on this other one. We'll put the seals on this. Just dry fit it and make sure they're in the right spot. Okay. A dry assembling also gives you an idea of where you, you need to apply your glue. Okay. So gluing this one on. Try that again. <laughs> okay, this one side. Okay, so that's the back one. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, we'll let that dry. Okay, so we have this component, which I think is a little part here. Let's test fit that. That's really nice and snug. It's really good. I like it. Okay. Alright, so we've got uh, this section here, I think. C19. Let's C19. Right, that goes in like that. Oops. Okay, so this, this part's going to be the support for the open canopy. So you see how the, the hinges are opened up there already? Which means this is going to sit in here. Like so. 
Okay. That's all looking okay. I guess the other component is we've got another one that goes in here. This one here, and the tweezers. Okay, so I'm just going to put one drop of this clear adhesive in the center. And then where it's going to join onto the side seals, I use just a touch of welding cement. Okay, but the welding cement I'm going to use here is going to be the slightest amount because if we get any of this onto the clear, it will craze. Okay, so let's touch here. And touch there. And press those together. All right, so that's just going to give us the best bond possible. But anything which is actually contacting the the clear plastic, we're using the clear white glue. Okay, so we've got that section sorted. Now on the front here, what else do I need? Okay, so I need that center section, which is G3. Okay, so we're G3 here. Even when you cut the clear parts, you can hear the difference in the sound. It sounds much more uh, solid and stiff. And that's because it is, and that's, um, that's where you need to be careful because these can shatter. Alright, so I'm using my sharp blade again to clean this up. Okay. Just make sure we've got that the right way around. So again, we've got this. This is the framework which is going to hold the canopy open. Let's do a dry fit and make sure it's all good. Okay, so it's important that we do have it in the, in the exact right location. Let's see where the glue is going to go. So it's going to go all the way around the edges here. So we just apply it very carefully. Carefully place this on top. Okay, so we've got our sensor section done there. Make sure there's N27, which is this part. And make sure we get that in the right way around as well. Okay. 
be more of this glue. Some tweezers give me a bit more control. Okay, just make sure we've got them in the right positions. All right, that's done. Okay, so I just double check everything here. Let's see, I've got uh, all these components. All right, so I've got this section, which is going to glue onto this one. Now before I do so, I think I'll just give it a bit of time for this clear glue to dry. And then we've got the struts, we'll put those on a bit later as well. Okay, which means practically step 60 is finished and we'll move on to step 61. So step 61 is basically putting all these in place. Now let's see, I've got this sill in here. I probably still want to get in there, I think. Do these seats fit in? Oh, they do. All right, let's see if I can glue this in so that I can still remove these all in one piece. And I think there's a good chance I will be able to do so. Let's try this here. That's really nice and snug. Be nice just to scrape that back a little bit, get a slightly better fit. Right, that feels really good. And then we have this center section, which will drop in. Drops in right there. Actually, there's no section. Let's see if that just fits on here. Just drops into place for the moment. Okay, so that means this one is going to glue in here. And this one will be gluing at the back. Okay, so I'm going to still need this front section, which is going to be this one, H1. Okay, let's just prepare that. Again, I'm cutting this off with quite a bit of the nub attached. Trim it off. Remove this section. And then trim with a sharp knife.
All right, let's test fit all this together. Okay, so this is running really good at the moment. Everything's really snug. I guess with our painting this is going to look a little strange because these components here you can see through. But it does demonstrate just how good the fit is on everything. Okay, I'm quite impressed with all of this. At the moment I'm going to leave this uh, just dry without glue. We'll give these a little bit of time to actually gain some strength. Struts we'll use a little bit later when it's all fully assembled. I'm going to move this glue out of the way so I don't get any accidents. All right, so while we're waiting for that to, uh, uh, for the glue to harden up and cure, I might just give these a quick clean up with uh, a cotton wool bud and some thinners. So I've got enamel thinners here. I'm just going to take off the smallest amount from the cap. I only need the smallest amount and then we'll start cleaning these up. This is from the wash that we applied last time. And this is just going to take the wash off all the high surfaces to give the impression of highlights. Okay, so we've already got the wash settling in, which is giving us all the shadow tone. It's simply going to give it more of a three-dimensional appearance. So you can see on the uh, cotton wool bud there, it's already picking up some black pigments off the, uh, the wash. Right, so there's one seat done. Don't even really see the difference. They are quite small, but this one does have the wash all over the place, and this one's been cleaned up. So we'll do exactly the same thing with this one. Now I'm using a cotton ball. Uh, cotton wool, well, what do you call them, a little q-tip I guess in some places, earbud is what it's called over here, cotton wool bud I guess, they're very handy because it does give a sort of stiff surface just to pick up all the details off the uh, high areas, it does have the disadvantage of these do get furry pretty quickly which means they can leave some fibers behind, you can get some better quality ones like the ones from either Mr. Hobby GSI, or the Tamiya ones, which are a tighter packed. Alternatively, you can use a, a brush, uh, a stiff brush. But a stiff brush, you just have to be careful that you don't take off all the wash, because brushes, their bristles can go into all the crevices. All right, so there's that. And now we just clean up the parts as well. Okay, that's a huge difference. Now I'm applying a black wash over absolutely everything, simply because we're not painting 
Now, if I was painting, I would be considering the different tones of wash because, for example, a very light gray, you wouldn't use a pure black wash because it's a little bit stark. You'll be using a darker gray. But in this circumstance, because everything is the same tone, basically, this black is just going to enhance all the details just so you can see what it's like straight out of the box. Okay, so there's a second pilot, and then I might just give these a little bit of rub down too. Whoops, I'm losing bits that I had resting there. No, it's still there. All right, so let's just rub this. So you might notice that this looks really, really rough because these, this is basically just over rivet detail, which wasn't very deep. So that's why it picked up absolutely everything off this wash. And you see how it's spreading around everywhere now. Now once I do this, I'm going to clean it up with some more. Because we want to try and get all those rivet details showing through. Without the wash, there's no chance you would have seen the rivet details. And you wouldn't even know, have known they were there. Okay, but this is making a huge difference already. Okay, so after doing that, quite a lot of it's actually come off. So I'll reapply some wash. So great thing with oil washes, you can apply it as many times as you like. Bearing in mind that if it was over a matte surface, it will stain the surface. So it can go dark if you do it too many times. But since this is fully gloss, it's coming off pretty cleanly. Okay, so that's giving you a good idea there. And then we'll go over that with some some cleaner stuff. So that's that section just there that I cleaned up. Very subtle. It does need a little bit more adjustment, so I will work on that a bit more. Okay, but you can see all these joins here. We'll come out really crisp. Yeah, it's coming up very nicely. Okay. All right, now let's check this on the carriage. That's feeling pretty strong now. Still got a bit of flex in it, probably because it's just sitting on the wire at the moment, which isn't a bad thing. I'll keep it sort of loose like this until we have the wheel on it. I'll totally check the alignment, and if it needs adjustment, I will do so. And then we can fix it in place with a fill of glue in there, and that'll be rock solid. Okay, so we've got most of our clear components done. I'm just waiting for them to cure. Cleaned up a little bit of wash here. So we're up to step 61, which is actually gluing on the canopy. I'll keep that loose for the moment because I think if I store it away in the box again, they're just going to break off. Uh, then we've only got the fuel probe left and then the ladder and that's the end of it. So we've only got a couple of steps left which means I think there's only one more session involved uh, and then probably another session in doing the wash. So pretty close now and it's looking really good. So there you go. This is where we're at, mainly in the cockpit area. Did a little bit of repair work, which is a, a nice little tutorial there by itself. And then we're going to be completing this rather shortly. So thank you again for joining me with this uh, episode of building the really nice 48 scale Tamiya Phantom F4B. We've got a lot of it put together. Uh, it's been a real learning experience actually, particularly working with this uh, prototype. Uh, the manual was all photocopied so some of it wasn't exactly clear and then again some of it was rushed, I wasn't reading it carefully enough. But it gives, uh, gives you an idea of even if you do make mistakes, anything can be fixed. So. Never panic. So, there we go. Quite like that too. You get your moving horizontal stabilizers. It's good stuff. All right, so thanks again. And um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments just below. And I'll see you next time around.